In our last session, we began to look at the simple truth, the simple gospel of Jesus Christ, and how that gospel answers everything, every problem, every complexity that sin created when it came into this world. Today, we begin a deep dive into the first part of that gospel message, and that is God becoming a human. But before we do that, we need to understand a little bit about the nature of God. What Colossians 2.9 calls the deity, or in some versions it calls the Godhead. And that refers to one God, but is three distinct and equally divine parts or beings all working together in unison. We call them God the Father, God the Word or the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You may have heard it called the Trinity, or a triune God, or the Trinitarian view of God. All these different words and, and ideas and ways to try to explain one God in three different parts or three different entities, all working together. Now, I know if you're like me, it makes you scratch your head a little bit to try to get our minds around that. And that is okay because people have been doing that for thousands of years, trying to understand and comprehend who God is in all His glory. You know, I'm sitting here on a bridge that uh, has a beautiful scenery on a lake and, and everything around me, and I, I could just stay here all day and see uh, and bask in this glory and this beauty that, that God created and enjoy right here, right now, what's going on. But the beautiful thing is that we didn't have a God that stayed in heaven to uh, enjoy all this glory and us be left to our own. He became a human being. He stepped into our world and got into the weeds with us. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Verse 14 goes on to tell us, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The verse from John paints a beautiful picture of this God on divine high sending part of Himself to be a part of humankind to step down into the weeds, to experience what we experience, to go through the day-to-day, -day, everything that we do day-to-day, -day, and yet, Hebrews will tell us, yet without sin. It says He made His dwelling or His tabernacle among us. And that's what makes it Christianity so unique, that we have a God that would do that, that loves us so much that He would initiate everything of our salvation by becoming one of us. Paul explains this further in Colossians chapter 1 when he says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Our first thought when we think of image is what somebody looks like. Well, Jesus came to show us what the Father looks like, not necessarily in physical appearance, but in His essence, in, in how He thinks, and how He feels, and in His power, and in His glory. Whoever God is, Jesus is in bodily form. As we said, this makes Christianity unique. No other religion in the world has this, where God left His place and sent part of Himself down to commingle with humanity. And that's what you have in Jesus. You have this deity commingling with humanity. Since Jesus was on the earth over 2,000 years ago, Human beings have tried to make Him less than who He is. The Jewish leaders said He was not God. He was just simply a teacher, a revolutionary, and they crucified Him for claiming to be God, charged Him with blasphemy. Since that time, people have said, oh, He's a... Some have said He didn't exist, but there's too much evidence for that. Some have said He was a, a good teacher. Some have said that He was... A, uh, even elevated Him to the level of being a prophet. And while he may have been all or some of those things at some point in time, he was much more than that. He was God, 100% God, 100% human. 
And that's what makes Christianity unique. That makes our God unique, a unique God becoming a human being to recreate a link to hum humankind. As we read through the four Gospels, we see how Jesus responded with grace and mercy to those who were hurting. We see how he responded in frustration and often anger with those who weren't showing justice and mercy. We see the compassion, we see the justice of God coming out in Jesus. That is the image of the invisible God that he came to show. The second thing Paul says in Colossians 1 is that Jesus occupies a unique place that only God could occupy. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. Jesus has this unique place with the Father and the Spirit that is uh, the power to create. But not only that, the power to sustain. Verse 17, He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. The power to create is one thing. The power to sustain is yet another. The power to create, sustain a system of plants and animals and human beings that are self-perpetuating is a whole nother thing altogether. And Jesus occupies that special place with the Father, with God. Not only that, it's a special place of authority. And He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything He might have the supremacy. So it wasn't just the church that He's the head of. It's also he has, He's the authority over death and in everything. Jesus has the authority. So we have God and humanity mingling together in Jesus that has every power, every right, every authority that God the Father does. Wow, what a powerful God and what a loving God to step down. But Paul ends up saying this, that with this becoming a human being, it was the only way for humanity to be saved. For God was pleased to have all His fullness dwell in Him. And that means that God was pleased with the plan of sending Himself. It was good for Him to step down into the weeds of our life so that we could be reconciled back to Him. And through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through His blood, shed on the cross. You see, it was only through God becoming a human that there is reconciliation. It is only because God becoming a human that there can be peace with God. The Bible tells us in Romans and in Corinthians that when sin came into the world through Adam and Eve's sin, that it created a deadly link to humanity. You see, God made an eternal sacrifice by becoming a human being to reestablish a link that is life-giving, to break the link that is death-giving. And only a unique, triune God could do that. So what does that do to your view of God? I hope it allows you to fall in love with Him and see the passion He has for you and for me, that He would leave His place on high, as the song says, to step down into our darkness to step down into our weeds. That is the call of the simple truth of the simple gospel, that you embrace that as He is longing to embrace you.